Today, I'm gonna to show you how I created this surreal Photoshop manipulation, so stick around. Surreal portraits are definitely a good way to grab people's attention. I always think it's kind of like watching a magic trick. You know that that magician hasn't really pulled a rabbit out of his hat, but your eyes are fooled enough that your brain is almost willing to believe it. For the viewer, this is pretty exciting to watch, and they won't be able to stop themselves wondering how the hell did he do that. Luckily for us, as photographers, creating simple illusions like our photo here is a hell of a lot quicker than having to master magic, but it'll still have the ability to impress and wow your friends and family. So if you guys want to try out this cool portrait idea for yourself, there's a few things you're going to need first. You're going to need a black or dark coloured background to shoot against, you're going to need a lamp, a light bulb and also a willing model. I just got to polish my pulp. <laughs> I'll just look straight in it. Well done pulp. The final image is made by capturing three specific images separately and then merging them later on in Photoshop, which I'll show you how to do. So the photos you'll need to capture are a photo of your model being lit by a bare bulb of a lamp. They can be holding the lamp for this shot if that makes it easier for you to shoot, just so long as there's enough space between the model's face and the bulb, as we're gonna need a bit of space to cut them out later on. The next shot you're gonna need is a photo of the lit bulb just by itself. So make sure when you're taking this shot that you have all of the glass parts visible within the frame and that you make sure that it's taken at the same angle as the first photo so that it looks right when we're merging them together later on. And finally, you're also gonna need a photo of your model holding a second light bulb that's being lit by the lamp. Maybe just touch the dip. Whoa. Now the only important thing to remember for this shot is that we need to make sure that we see the screw part of the bulb, the actual bit that screws into the lamp. So when your model's holding the bulb, make sure that they're not obscuring it too much. The second thing to remember is that the position of the lamp is also important here. The light needs to be placed just above the unlit bulb so that the light is cast downwards onto the hand and the arm. One final note before we jump into Photoshop, the whole reason why I've decided to shoot all of this against the plain back wall is purely because not only does it add a dark and moody vibe, but it also makes things a hell of a lot simpler when it comes to cutting things out and merging images later on in Photoshop. The darkness will hide a lot of seams and make the whole thing a lot easier to piece together. Of course, if you're feeling more confident and adventurous, please feel free to experiment with different backgrounds, but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna stick with the simple black one. Okay, so assuming that you've got all of your photos taken now, let's head over to Photoshop. As ever, I start by uploading all of the images to Lightroom and then shortlisting the photos to the three that I actually want to merge together. I then make some very, very basic exposure adjustments just to make sure that all of my shots are matched up in terms of brightness. The only notable creative adjustments I make at this stage are cranking the texture slider way up and also adding a bit of clarity just to give the images that sort of hyper real gritty kind of feel. I then brought all of the images into Photoshop and started piecing them together. So the first step is to bring all of the images into one project in Photoshop because at the moment they're just three separate images. To do this you're going to need to select the entire image by pressing Ctrl and A or that would be Command and A if you're using a Mac and you'll know it's worked because you'll see the marching ants running right around the edge of the canvas. Now press Ctrl and C or Command and C to copy the selection. Then head over to the image you're going to copy the image into. I'm going to copy everything into the image of Paul holding the lamp in his hand. Once you're there, just press Ctrl and V or Command and V to paste the image in. And now this image will appear as its own layer within the layers palette. If we take a quick look at the layers palette, you can see the order I've stacked the images up in. At the bottom, I had the shot where Paul was holding the lamp. On top of that, I have the photo where Paul is holding the unlit bulb and then dangling the lamp above it to light it. And finally above that I have the photo of the lit bulb. With the layers all in place I then started to mask out the bits I didn't want. To create a layer mask simply click the layer you want to add the mask to in the layers palette. Then click the add mask button at the bottom of the layers palette. Just to help us out we can also turn off the top two layers for now by clicking the eye icon next to them. This is just so that we can see what we're doing. Now select the brush tool by pressing B on the keyboard. Then make sure that the foreground colour is set to pure black. If it's not, you can do this very quickly by pressing D, then X. And all we need to do is brush over the areas we don't want. So for my image, I'm going to hide everything other than Paul's portrait on the right hand side of the frame. If you need to, you can make the brush bigger or smaller very quickly by tapping the square bracket keys on the keyboard. For the next layer, I masked out everything other than Paul's arm. I did this by using the polygonal lasso tool with the feather set to one pixel 
and then simply selecting around the arm. Then I simply press the add mask but the add mask button. Bleh. Then I press the add mask button to mask out the background. Just be careful not to remove the metal screw part at this stage because we're going to need that. On the third and final layer, I use the polygonal lasso tool again and cut out the bulb. So now we're ready to piece everything together. So let's start by turning off the topmost layer, which happens to be our bulb, and that's just to get it out of the way for now because we're going to deal with that in a second. Now let's move this arm layer into position so that it looks right, and we can do this by using the move tool. Next we need to add in the lit bulb, so let's turn that layer back on again. Then we can simply use free transform just to scale the bulb until it's the right size to fit the screw mount. Now obviously removing all of that stuff from the background was going to leave some blank spaces in the photo, so I quickly grabbed the eyedropper tool and took a colour sample from the background, and then created a solid colour adjustment layer and set it to this colour. I then moved this layer to the bottom of the layers palette to act as our background. So that's pretty much most of the photo constructed now, so with everything in place it was time to add a few finishing touches. First I created a new blank layer and then grabbed the eyedropper tool and selected a nice warm orange tone from the image I used Paul's hand and then set that to the foreground colour. Next I used the radial gradient tool and set it so it went from the orange colour that I just picked to transparent and then dragged it out from the centre of the bulb to the edge of the portrait. And this is going to be used to create sort of an orange haze to our portrait. To help blend it in a little better, I reduced the opacity of this layer to 25%. Finally, I moved this layer so that it was above the portrait layer, but beneath the bulb and the arm layers. At this stage, I noticed that some of the light had caught Paul's ear, which looked a little bit odd. It looked like a little elf ears poking out. So I quickly removed this by clicking on the portrait layer and then using the spot healing brush. As for the colour work, I didn't really want to do anything too drastic. I liked what we already had, I liked the warm tones that we got from the bulb. So all I ended up doing was creating a curves adjustment layer, and on the blue channel I brought up the black point slightly and brought down the white point by about the same amount, and that kind of added a blue tint to the shadows and warmed up some of the highlights. To finish it off, I wanted to add some texture and depth to the portrait, so I found this cool dust particle image online and decided to import that into the project. I started by scaling it to size using Free Transform, and then I set the blending mode to screen and then reduced the opacity to 15%. Even after I added the dust layer, it still felt a bit empty to me, so I quickly duplicated the dust layer and then used the Free Transform to scale it and rotate it around to 180 degrees to add more dust into the shot. The colour of the dust was also bugging me, it was far too white, it obviously wanted to have a bit of an orange hue to it, so I quickly merged both of the dust layers together by selecting them both in the layers palette, right clicking on them, and then choosing merge layers. Then I created a photo filter adjustment layer and clipped it to the dust layer. Now to do this you simply hold down the alt key and click in between the two layers within the layers palette, and this will clip the top layer, our photo filter adjustment layer, to the bottom one, which was our dust layer. And all that means is that the photo filter will only be applied to that one dust layer. Then on the photo filter adjustment layer I set the density to 100 and unticked preserve luminosity. To finish off I just wanted to add some sharpening. Rather than doing the sort of traditional sharpening I wanted to add two different types of sharpening to the image to make it look slightly hyper real. So firstly I created a merged copy of the image. To do this I pressed Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E on the keyboard. Then I headed up to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. In the window that appeared, I set the amount to 80% and the radius to three pixels and clicked OK. Next, I went back up to the filter option, but this time I went to Other, High Pass. In this window, I set the radius to three and clicked OK. Then I set the blending mode for this layer to Overlay. At this stage we're pretty much done, but for my image I noticed that it was ever so slightly too dull, so I just wanted to bring back some of that brightness. So to do this I created a level adjustments layer and then dragged the white point to the left until I was happy. And here is the final result. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this little Photoshop manipulation project. If you did, don't forget to give this video a like and let us know in the comments below. If you did decide to give this project a go, please share your images on our Facebook and Instagram page because we absolutely love seeing the work that you guys create. Anyway guys, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next one.